very warm welcome to the main map with us, Dr. Yogesh Dadve, who is the APAC IT head at Adiant India. A very warm welcome, sir. Thank you for joining at CXO TV. It's our pleasure to have you at the platform. Hey, thank you so much. Thank you for the invite. Um, and I uh, appreciate uh, you guys calling me um, and requesting me to express my views, um, share my experience, and um, as well as uh, in my contribution to automotive industry and the innovations that has been um, embedded into the um, entire vertical. Of course, uh, you know, all set and done, all these are my personal views and uh, not um, and, and experience that I have come across last 25 years. Um, nothing to do with the organizations that I have worked with or even currently I'm with. Thank you. So, uh, thank you, Seth, in our pleasure to have you on the platform. And before we begin, uh, you know, with your more than two decades of experience, we would actually like to you know, then briefly introduce ourselves to our sex audience and how your journey has been so far in the industry. We would love to know some glimpse about it. It would be great. Absolutely. I mean, um, automotive is my passion. Um, and automotive bringing innovations into the automotive uh, segment um, has been um, in my blood, I would say. Um, since 1999, when I was, I started my journey from here in Pune at Kinetic Engineering, um, you know, it was just making sure how two wheelers, the Lunas, um, you know, come into the market and what's the fascinating uh, equipment which can give about 80 kilometers per uh, liter kind of, uh, you know, uh, economy to the, to the segment. And of course, it, at that time, it was the highest selling two wheeler into the segment. But, you know, moving across from that platforms, um, making sure the essential technologies are in place and then moving on towards uh, other vehicle segment, including the four wheeler segments and kind of. And now we are we uh, look at, uh, you know, having the electrical vehicle, having the autonomous vehicle um, into the um, into the uh, arena and bringing small but very effective uh, technological platforms in them and making sure it brings the comfort economical advantage and as well as uplifting the safety feature into the vehicle you know from embedding the technological side of it that's my right. journey. so i that i think that's a very wonderful uh, journey it has been indeed and as you just mentioned you know this entire automotive uh, industry when we talk about this has gone to remarkable advancement uh, in the years that we are seeing from electrical vehicles to this autonomous driving concepts that we are uh, in today's time. So, you know, as for your, you know, right sets, you know, what do you think that how are these technological uh, shifts actually impacting the manufacturing process and what are the benefits uh, that the industry is expecting or might be having right now? So, basically, uh, one major change which has come is from the electrification. Um, from the electrification perspective, um, the EVs of the segment that we, we uh, currently see in the market, I mean, um, quite frankly with you, it's yet to be stabilized. And everybody will come up with their own opinion. Um, the manufacturers will come up with their own opinion. Someone will take a head start on it. Someone will, um, you know, some OEMs will prefer to take a, you know, slightly steady approach on it. Um, however, uh, you know, uh, offering those EV models into the market, making sure um, the clientele gets an experience of it and ultimately resulting into the lightweight um, material which is getting used into the vehicle, you know, um, then introducing the renewable energy components, uh, making sure um, the charging stations are not from our thermal nuclear or um, uh, directly electric uh, component, but also on the solar base so that we can introduce the sustainable um, energy component in it. And as well as last but not the least is having a sustainable supply chain in, in making sure we have a green manufacturing processes into the place and overall bringing bringing the, the ecosystem which is a long term and as well as carbon neutral right so when you actually talked and discussed about the manufacturing process i think uh, with that comes uh and that was very much important and significant at the same time as having a resilient supply chain so, yeah. you know, how do you, absolutely. So, how do you see that the uh, motor vehicle and manufacturing industry is actually enhancing the supply chain resilience to um, mitigate the disruptions and at the same time maintain our production efficiency? Well, if I'm at the, at the uh, decision maker's choice, right, um, then 
my first preference will be to diversify diversify the business um and then identify the dependency matrix on each level with the dollar value associated with that so uh, one thing which i will i will come bring into the picture that is diversify supply chain that is one okay that means if a, as a manufacturer having a not just a concentrated base but having a dotted net of the base so for example if i need some rubber bush for my vehicle for you know i need it in a quantity so may, i will make sure of course the nearest one is a best choice but i will also keep some handy resources or supplies in my kitty which are not so near in the geography but i can you know uh, i can have a confidence on them that in case of any contingency plans they can uh, provide me um uh, the effective components second um in any industry um nowadays as a supplier people go towards just in time that is jeeps because you know no one would like to keep a bleeding point of having inventory in their city okay um and it's quite natural and normal to produce when i get the order okay um, of course that comes with a disadvantage like need to have those components in the warehouse when i need it and that when is can be next minute okay so having those warehouses uh, refilled properly with effective uh, warehouse management systems and making sure we have uh, automation or ai based tools which gives alert mechanisms if something is in a short or something is in excess so that i avoid my you know inventory bleeding point and as well as i make sure my refilling mechanisms are in place so that i have effective inventory in my warehouses to sustain for a couple of days and then situations are uh, are um, you know coming into the picture like anything or we also how covid impacted our supply chain and not only covid how suez canal um, you know uh, that big ship got stuck and how that impacted um, overall ecosystem it took about two quarters to recover from that a uh, one ship getting stuck for 6 days at one particular place so um and, and that creates a chaos having a um at, at ground level um the risk management um needs to be in place and the mitigation plans to to that that risk um and um one thing which we believed in right from uh, my younger days is having a effective collaboration between the suppliers or yeah, having a collaborative supply chain that gives a wide spectrum not just a competitive advantage for the supplier but also identify how critical am i for a particular um, for a particular plant for a particular machinery to make that product successful so giving that ownership to the supplier and making them accountable for their actions is uh, you know it, it makes it brings that sense of value into the overall um, um in a thought process of that and then uh, making sure all these uh, ecosystems the woods backbones we talk about are digitalized and no paperwork and automations are in place whether you use rpas for that you may use a uh, low code no code platforms for that but that um, you know having augmentative architectures in place brings up or adds the value to the entire ecosystem and uh, uh, last point uh, is scenario of planning so what if kind of scenarios need to be planned and the effective pilot books uh, need to be put in place absolutely right like i can't uh, agree more to this point when you talk about uh, collaboration and partnership i think it plays a very crucial role in this supply chain process and as you mentioned when uh, you know the difficult times and can't predict those you actually need to support uh, from those collaboration or the partnership so having a strong uh relation with them is very really necessary so okay. moving ahead then we talk about this digital transformation as well as the industry for point technologies which are have actually reshaped this entire manufacturing process that we were discussing all while ago so how do you think that these uh, technologies being integrated into automotive ma- manufacturing and uh, what are uh, the anticipated outcomes that you think uh, you are coming by so um when we talk about smart factory um or um bringing robotics into the picture bringing automation into the picture 
you know, people will term them in any any um, uh, any of their jargons. I would say, okay. Um, industry 4.0 is the same thing, which is most amused and abused word right now. Uh, okay. Um, I'm I'm sorry. I may be you know busting some myths here. But today we are calling as in industry 4.0. Tomorrow we'll call it 5.0. You know, the other is tomorrow something else. Bottom line is how effectively it is helping to achieve the business goal. Right. For example, you know, I want to go from destination A to destination B by manufacturing a particular, um, you know, vehicle. How effectively, uh, uh, you know, reducing that time frame in each each workstation why assembling my stations for that whether you have to use automotive processes you have to use a 3d printing devices you have to use artificial intelligence to bring those decisions into the place um i know for example for quality for paint qualities anything that you are producing um for that what's the best effective technology helping making sure your product is coming out in less time than the previous one okay and with higher quality standards for that you have to use augmented reality to have a digital tweet in place uh, making sure um, the uh, you know robustness tests are done on your pocs and on your design structures on your plm structures rather than having it on the component basically i know i'll i'll, I'll name a couple of like four or five um important things as an outcome of that that is enhancing the efficiency okay or improving efficiency enhancing the quality standard of the product uh reducing the downtime or proactively managing the downtime and uh, uh bringing the sustainability component into the picture for example we all talk about carbon emission how much carbon emission am i reducing or and and then i know some people will come up with a thought process that what carbon emission uh, impacts will come into the picture and at one side there are wars going on they are firing rockets uh, you know they are uh, bringing pollution into the atmosphere but at least i know in a while building the bridge even a small animal can bring a difference is is the same case if i am that small animal bringing a small difference into the in, in while building that bridge and we all indians know the anecdotes behind this uh, a story um but that that gives a satisfaction to me that i help bring carbon neutrality in my product absolutely i think every small initiative slowly and gradually takes it to the bigger change of the picture that we are looking forward to and uh, yeah and as you mentioned you know about sustainable sustainability which is at, again a very much growing concern across the industries that i think so uh we would I'd like to understand a little bit more as to how is this uh, rotor vehicle manufacturing sector uh, addressing sustainability and environmental responsibility and as you mentioned about the initiatives so uh, can you share some uh, initiatives aimed at uh, re reducing the uh, industry's carbon footprint sure i mean um as i will not be in, uh, i will not be in position to give a specific numbers okay because yeah, all yeah. that organization driven how we are at the government mandate you all uh, we all know as a um, mandate and pronounced from red fort uh, and uh, during our independence day our uh, prime minister has given some objective as a entire country to reduce the carbon footprint of the country by x number now everyone every individual in this country is responsible and accountable to contribute even a small portion to that automotive manufacturing having the large setups they take their own pride in uh, you know achieving some goals in carbon neutrality or bringing zero carbon emissions um uh, in in line to that um, there was a larger push towards electric vehicles which will bring our carbon footprint uh, you know from compared to ice engine to you know zero carbon emissions on evs of course few people will definitely come up with their flag um you know stating if you are charging your vehicle using uh, uh, a thermal or a nuclear or a charcoal based plant then actually you are not uh, contributing rather while making those batteries you are adding some more uh, you know co2 emissions in it but it's a uh, see for the short term goals we have to compromise on few parameters however if we build some solar parks if we build some 
and also the workstations. I'll give you my own example. Okay, I have taken a two wheeler. Um, I'll avoid the OEM name, but I have taken a um, battery operated two wheeler. Okay, at my home, I have put a small solar dish which gets charged during the day, twelve to sixteen hours, and then it charges my EV. I'm not dependent on an electrical socket to charge my electrical two wheeler. So if I as an individual take those steps and make sure I uh, effectively use the solar, I effectively use the renewable energy, um, uh, then as an organization, if I can build a complete solar panel, make my, uh, you know, use the same as my electricity for my plant, um, you know, not depending on direct uh, circuit entries. Same thing, I think, with all these data centers coming into the picture in India, everybody is coming with their own um, power source internally, either on their roof or the or the real estate that is available to them. So market acceptance goes higher because that's that you know if uh, um, it's the same thing. We are uh, we are uh, at the Diwali phase right now. Um, we all go with the green fire crackers. Why? Because green fire crackers, if they, the emission ratio is 70% uh, less than the actual firecracker, that becomes um, uh, environmental responsibility on our shoulder. Correct. I think uh, it's very much important uh, to effectively use such renewable uh, energy to you know, make these uh, changes come by. So, uh, also at the same time, uh, with the integration of uh, automation and the new age technologies that uh, you know, we discussed a while ago, you know, the work force in the motor vehicle manufacturing industry is constantly evolving. So, uh, how do you think that these companies are adapting and upskilling their employees to actually thrive in these changing environment uh, and process it Um See, basically, it's um, all about um, having your talent upskilling. Okay, um, okay. and uh, talent upskilling doesn't happen overnight. It's a continuous and consistent journey of any organization. Um, I have seen very, very good practices followed um, in my current and as well as me and my earlier organizations for um, uh, talent retention mechanisms, talent upskilling, motivating them to go towards uh, learning new technologies, filing the patents associated with that, um, helping them um, you know, learn um, and go out of the box, uh, bring those technologies um, and uh, supporting those organizations um, while bringing some POCs in place. Failure or success is a completely different mechanism. Either you test to fail or fail to plan. That's the thought processes which organizations are coming into the, uh, com you know, coming to a com common um, uh, thought processes. When I was in, um, you know, Cleveland, Ohio, we had uh, one very very uh, you know the simple understanding you know contributing at least one hour like 60 minutes in a week just for brainstorming nothing else you know like just after lunch like uh, you know our lunch used to be like 12, 12 o'clock but our manager used to uh, force us almost force us to sit down in a conference um, forget about laptops forget about day-to-day -day mountain activities some you know meetings and kind of but just think how you can add value, one. Two, how can you bring a new technology into the picture? What will you do to contribute to bring that technology in? And then it, the, the answers could be as weird as, you know, having satellite commu communication. Sat and the, the thought process could be as weird as having a wireless electricity. You know, can be anything. But these are realities, right? which we used to discuss in 2007-2008 with, I don't know how much we contributed to that, uh, and it could be nothing, but at least we had those thought processes in our head, forced by someone to bring some, uh, you know, at least bring, you know, read out something for, and then speak about it in, in like, you know, 30-35 minutes. I think these are very good practices which organizations should cultivate in them, you know, put the essential urea in it, and make sure the uh, and the fruits and branches of their talent, which is in house, um, bring that um, uh, a sweet fruit in their like cherries in their organization. I think well, that is a pretty much uh, great and wonderful initiative that you have had an experience at your uh, career. So, yeah. uh, further, when we are actually talking about the uh, technologies as well, 
So, you know, what do you think that, uh, what would be the top focus uh, tech areas and priorities that uh, you think uh, would be coming up in the next three to five years? Uh, see, next three to five years, um, um, I mean, of course, many organizations are going towards smart factory uh, setups, whether it's a uh, small organization or large uh, conveyor belt based organizations. They are going to go towards, um, you know, having um, safety um, issue related automations in place. For example, if somebody somebody is having a, a you know, forging uh, industry, uh, they have a furnace which their tem temperature goes to 5000 degrees centigrade or more than that, uh, a human life safety is involved in it. That's where a lot of our robotics and automation is going to get enforced and industries will go towards that. So use of robots where safety yeah, is a paramount feature. Second, um, uh, what I see even a small organization, a, a mid cap or small cap organizations are adapting um, 3D printing kind of technologies where um, um, they can build a POC in, in 30 minutes time frame. Uh, POC is proof of concept um, compared to uh, a couple of weeks of time frame from the legacy platform that we used to have. So any any proof of concept which we, which I can um, uh, which I can bring into the platform for um, fail fast kind of mechanism. So I know this is proof of concept. It may fail in my testing, but if I'm going to fail, let's fail fast so that we get time to recover ourselves. So that's where it's going to come. Uh, in overall ecosystem, the supply chain is going to play a very vital role. In that, from the technology perspective, as I'm from the IP background, the big data uh, architectures and analytics are going to play a very vital role. Everybody likes dashboards. Everyone, I know you, me, and the, uh, all that uh, C charter um, uh, uh, the platforms, everybody likes their dashboards. But how frequently those get updated? You know, for example, if we are at the airport and if we see that screen where the flight is on time or flight is delayed, um, I know we get anxious about it. Why is it not refreshing? So important thing is how effectively and quantitatively that dashboard gets uh, you know updated is more important. So big data is going to play a, a very vital role in it. Let's say two more technologies which are going to play a very vital role, and I'm going to put a full stop after that. Is a, a one is augmented reality, that is we call it as AR, yeah. um, and uh, that's for the experience. Uh, because if I want to drive a vehicle, how will I? How do I feel that vehicle? Absolutely. Make a feel of it. Bring a feel of it. Even in the clothing industry, they are bringing that feel. That uh, there is a uh, texture. There is a shirt. I want to stitch a fabric, particular fabric. How will I feel in that fabric? And uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell you. Um, I was in Chicago a few years ago. There was a um, a tanning salon uh, which I visited. Of course, I don't need to be tanned, but they implemented the technology. So I went to visit them. Um, and they had a feature, like you, if you put your uh, you know, um, arm over there, you'll see the screen, uh, on the screen, how your skin will surface after tan, before tan, what, how much percent. You should have a two tan, you should have an eight tan. And depending on um, what is a schedule, for example, if people will have a, um, you know, ca ramp walk or their you know features uh, like this interview. Um, how should I feel in that interview? What is the lighting? Accordingly, they decide the tanning. How much tanning I should have on my skin? So that's all about augmented reality um, and uh, making sure um, the you know the CX customer satisfaction index comes in the picture. And the last point, all this, the blockchain will play a very vital role. Um, I know a few years ago. Um, this was a buzzword, blockchain was a buzzword, but it's a reality today. And it's no more just a fantasy uh, where people will talk about a blockchain. Um, I'm, of course, uh, I'm not trying to uh, connect it to um, you know, other thought processes like virtual currencies and kind of people were talking about. That's a, a mushroom which came into the picture a few years ago. Um, you know, but um, blockchain is going to play a vital role for all our day-to-day -day life experiences. All right. I mean, when you talk about uh, looking ahead and uh, what is your vision 
for the future of motor vehicle manufacturing and how do you exactly see the technology continuing for uh, you know to revolutionize the industry in the coming years and what opportunity or challenges uh, you think that uh, lie ahead so first um i mean uh, compliance is towards um, policies uh, that i will say that's a um, base uh, blessing and as well as that's a challenge because as you um, you know you are in mumbai um and uh, uh, some pollution standards are coming into the picture already the debate has started a uh, similar structure is in delhi um now uh, and all states we are going to follow so if there are any bs3 bs4 engines i'm talking about india perspective bs3 bs4 engines are there then um those are going to be having upliftment um towards the next standard of engines um whether it's bs6 or kind of that's going to be a standard now it doesn't come with um a, you know it requires a deep pockets for the end user now as a automotive industry um uh you know experienced person my first thought process needs to be how cheaper better technology can help bring those um essential components in the industry uh, for the end user for example if a um if a bs6 engine vehicle cost a uh, x amount today how can i bring uh, a technological advantage so that it becomes x minus 1 for end user so the cost of ownership you know reduces for that uh, if i have to reduce the you know bring a lightweight vehicle into the picture uh, you know for example if i talk about a suv which is a, a two ton vehicle right now um, how can i have the same safety features with 1.6 ton you know if i reduce the 400 kilo from a vehicle from a suv and making it more safety uh, unable to vehicle it will reduce the cost of um of manufacturing that vehicle at the plant so ultimately i can pass that benefit to the customer or end user um one thing which i learned in last 20 24 years is um, you know how every day um we help towards reducing weight you know weight or reduce the wastage um you know i remember i used to um uh, in during my early years uh, while i was part of uh, comins you know there was a we used to manufacture alternators and an alternator is a completely a copper based component now when we talk about copper based component it's a precious one of the precious metal okay reducing the wastage of copper was one of the indicator for the success of that plant now making sure all these comes into the picture and uh, we all need towards green manufacturing processes uh th- that i think these are core five components which uh, will um, you know help um if an organization maintains the standards to help all these they will um, definitely bring the um uh, bring the comp- uh, bring the advantage to the end users and uh, with all that uh, from the government policy perspective uh, i am you know having the effective end of life recycling process uh, like we we talk about a uh, 15 years for a vehicle um similarly there are there is a thought process having a 10 years of life cycle for the vehicle but what as a end user of a vehicle if i own a vehicle what do i get out of it not just a cost but benefits from the um, from the government government like subsidies in terms of uh, why buying the new vehicle subsidies while you know uh, in my filing the taxes or kind of these policies uh, will be very very beneficial for the end user so uh, i think thank you so much for all the uh, information that you have shared i think it has been a great discussion on uh, the overall automotive industry uh, with this we have come to the end of the entire interaction thank you once again for joining and sharing your time with us today this session thank you so much thank you for the invite i appreciate it. thank you sir thank you sir. for more updates from cxo tv please like and subscribe to our channel